Uh, this is uh, David and Hossa with uh, San Antonio Express News, and I'll be your host for this uh, high school uh, sports roundtable. And uh, we're going to be discussing uh, a topic that uh, I'm writing about for uh, uh, for the newspaper. It's on uh, women's athletic directors. And uh, this is an article that we're running in conjunction with uh, Women's History Month. And uh, for it, we've uh, assembled three athletic directors from the San Antonio area who are, you guessed it, women. And uh, they are also three of my favorites to work with. And I've worked with all of them since I got here 11 years ago. So I'm not sure if they share the same feelings with me all the time, <laughs> but we navigate through it the best we can, right? So by way of jumping into it, would you each introduce yourselves, where you work, uh, where, you, where you went to high school, where you played collegiately, and where you've coached? Um, if you don't mind, Treva, we'll start with you. Sure. Um, so um, my name is Treva Corrales, and I work at Judson ISD as the Executive Director of Athletics. A little bit about me is that I started out in SAISD, um, went through uh, Burbank High School, proud graduate, cr proud Bulldog. Mm -hmm. And um, from there, I played collegiately softball and basketball in South Dakota and got back to Texas as quick as I could because that was no joke. Mm -hmm. um, and then I um, was very mm -hmm. fortunate. I, I worked at a middle school for one year at Northside, and that was not for me. Um, bless the middle school coaches. And um, got an opportunity to work at my alma mater as a head basketball coach there for six years. And then moved on to Wagner when that opened with uh, Tina Camacho as the head coach. And the opportunity came open at Judson and I was there for 11 years and um, then transitioned from there to this point now. And we'll get into, cause you, you know, you did a few things at Judson and we'll get into that here in a little while. Mm -hmm. um, Roseanne. Uh, I'm Roseanne Martinez, the athletic director at Harlandale ISD. I started out coaching at my alma mater at Harlandale. I graduated from Harlandale in 1989. And uh, after Harlandale, I um, went on to Incarnate Word College at the time, mm -hmm. now the University of Incarnate Word. Right. But uh, showing my age there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, after at Incarnate Word, I played volleyball. So when I graduated from Incarnate Word with my bachelor's, I, I went back to work at Harlandale High School for four years, and then I uh, took a head volleyball job at South Sam. Uh, I was at South Sam for three years, and I left there and went to Northside. And I worked at Northside uh, as an assistant volleyball coach at Taft and then got the head job at uh, Holmes High School. And so I was at Holmes for nine years and had great experiences there and then moved back home to Harlandale ISD as the head volleyball coach and women's coordinator at McCullum High School. I was in that position for nine years until uh, this position that I'm in now came open. And so I've been doing this for five years. Uh, Suzette Ariola, Athletic Director at East Central ISD. Um, I am a proud graduate of SAISD and a, a Highland Owl. Hoo, hoo, yeah, <laughs> 1982. Oh. Um, yeah, I was, my road was a little different. I was a basketball player, did play some volleyball. But uh, I had uh, multiple scholarships in basketball. Uh, unfortunately, my family uh, went through the death of my grandfather, and so I didn't. I wasn't going to leave until till January for that to, to go to school. And so I went to St. Phillips uh, just to start my getting my basics done. And at that point, St. Phillips had a really successful volleyball program, and uh, Emily Stotts was the coach there, and Gold Castleberry, and when I got there, and so they they offered me a volleyball scholarship and say. You know, I was coming there, and uh, anyway, I ended up playing volleyball, and we uh, we were at the national tournament there, and Stephen F. Austin saw me there, and so my life changed. Uh, you know, one day I was going to play basketball, the next day I knew I was playing volleyball at Steve at St. Phillips, and went to the national tournament, and next thing I knew I was playing volleyball the next three years at uh, Stephen F. Austin, and then stayed, and I was a, a graduate assistant at Stephen F. Austin, and stayed on to to be a um, associate professor for a year and a half there. Came back uh, in 89, started my coaching career at a little place called St. Mary's Hall. Mm -hmm. I was just gonna just gonna coach. I just wanted to coach. I didn't want to teach. My, my master's was uh, in corporate fitness is where I was gonna go work at USAA. And then all of a sudden I got to St. Mary's Hall and they were like, oh, we have a PE job. I'm like, I'm just here to be your volleyball coach <laughs> and we'll offer you $20,000. I'm like, Ooh, $20,000 back in 89. So 
did that and fell in love with teaching and the rest is history since 89. I've been teaching and coaching and then in, um, I started my career at St. Mary's Hall for about nine years I was there. Uh, head volleyball, head softball, dabbled in some basketball at that point and then moved on to Southside High School uh, where I was head volleyball coach, uh, head softball coach at times and uh, uh, coordinator, assistant AD uh, towards the end of that career. And then I moved over there with Treva and had a year at Wagner. Um, there was a very, very stout staff for one year at Wagner. I mean, there were a lot of head coaches that left their jobs mm -hmm. to come to Wagner during that year. And then I got blessed uh, when Mr. Toscano took over at uh, as principal at East Central. And I got to go start my assistant principal's uh, journey there at East Central. And then in uh, 2013, I moved over to the athletic department. So I was the assistant AD and then um, back about about six years ago, I took over as the athletic director. So yeah, it's been a great journey. Yeah, and we'll we'll get into we'll get into each of y'all's journey because I think each of you have a really unique unique way of how you got to your positions. Um, well, just kind of way of, by way of just jumping into it. Um, so the three of you represent seventy five percent of the women's <laughs> athletic directors in San Antonio in the greater San Antonio area. Uh, Lori Wilson over at Lytle ISD is the athletic director there, and she's also the girls basketball coach. So which is amazing. And I think at one point there were actually a few more women's athletic directors. So we're kind of in a, in the, uh, the, the low cycle of this. So kind of given that, and just knowing that you guys are in a male dominated profession, uh, most of, most of your colleagues around the state and around the area, um, were either football, are football coaches or have been football coaches. So they kind of have their experience on that side of the table. What is it like for you to be in this position where you, where, where, where you don't have that, you don't have that background. If each of you can just talk briefly about that, I don't see. I don't. I don't, I don't see a difference in in you know the role that I have versus mm -hmm. the role that the ma a male has. Right? That, right. Of course, there are differences. Not being a football coach, however, because I feel I'll speak for myself because we've been around sports for for so long. I mean, mm -hmm. there is familiarity with football and and with everything else. You know, inventory and budgets and so forth. That that goes along with all the other sports, whether it's male or female. So, mm -hmm. and, and then, you know, there's, I feel like the, the men in our profession, they are very respectful. Uh, they're mentors and uh, they also provide assistance if there's anything that we need and we do the same for them. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with what she said. Um, the volleyball, uh, volleyball, the, the football coaches we have um, in Judson are, are tremendous help. Um, they're respectful. I think that, you know, there's a saying that if, if you're a good coach, you can coach anything. Mm -hmm. And um, so I think regardless of the sport, um, if, if you know how to coach, then, you know, you, you can do a lot of what we do. Um, it's about decision making. It's about being confident um, in the process and and, you know, being able to. I guess work with a lot of different people in a lot of different sports and the more hats you wear, um, the more you can relate to everybody else. Mm -hmm. And being consistent with everyone too. Absolutely. Is, yeah. Being fair. Yeah. In our role, I think, you know, it takes the pressure off of our football coach to be able to be the athletic director because in most school districts where the athletic director is the football coach, um, I'm sure there is a lot of of you know animosity where people feel like the football program gets everything mm -hmm. in our world you know um it's more even across the board you know because we're not you know in, in our leadership role we see everyone is getting uh, a fair shot whatever they need we want to provide uh, equally for everybody and for all of our kids uh, not not just the football program uh, do they bring in the most money, the most revenue for us? Absolutely. Uh, but at the end of the day, we take care of all of our kids. Uh, and so I, as you look across the state of Texas, we just got back from the spring showcase uh, yesterday. And it was I was just I felt really proud to see more women mm -hmm. in, at our conference than ever before, even though it was the spring showcase. You know, there was over uh, close to 300. And I would I would have to say there were probably you know, a hundred women mm -hmm. in, in, you know, at that conference and, and each year that number continues to grow. And so that makes us feel good to know that, that we are making a place in this state, you know, when it comes to 
women athletic directors and being able and the leadership role that we have within this state. Well, kind of building on that, uh, all of you obviously have women's sports backgrounds. You participated in them. You coach them. How important is it to have that background going into this position? Uh, what, what, what different perspective do you bring or have you brought, you know, to the table? Yeah, I, I would say um, for me and, and being a successful athlete and coach is that um, you learn to do your homework. Um, you learn to prepare. You learn that um, to be methodical about the decisions you make. And um, to be informed, right? Mm -hmm. And you take those same principles with you as an athletic director. There's been many big, big games that I've been a part of where you've had to make tough decisions, you know, whether it's a person off the bench or a play call or mm -hmm. whatever it is. And it's, it's basically the same thing on a obviously larger scale because right. it affects a lot more people. And so I think just being confident, being informed – and making the decisions of what's best for kids first is what we did as a coach. And that's, you know, what we do now. Um, but I think having that background is very crucial yeah. because you have to, you have to be able to make decisions sometimes very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes it, it's going to take a while to make a decision. And sometimes it involves more people like your school board, your superintendent, things like that. So, um, I think it, it, it's probably one of the most crucial backgrounds to have. Yeah, understanding uh, sports on different aspects. Because when you're an athlete, you, you learn so many things, right? Besides mm -hmm. the discipline and the right. hard work and everything else. Uh, you, you learn time management and so forth. So going through those experiences, not only as an athlete, but also as a coach on a different level, you know, you're able to relate those needs that coaches have as well. Because we're constantly having to help our coaches grow too, right? So we understand it from the coaching part of it, you know, coaching young ones and then mm -hmm. still helping adults, you know, foster their environment to something even bigger and better and and bring yeah. those those attributes to them. Having those experiences is I think helps us tremendously. I think we can take that back to, you know, even the coaches that we had, right? So as we emulate and probably grow from someone that that helped raised us. Mm -hmm. Uh, at least I know I did, you know, I wouldn't be here without my middle school coaches and my high school coaches. Uh, and so and understanding um, empathy, empathy and, and where our kids come from, because they all they all come with a little bit of, of luggage, right, and baggage mm -hmm. that we have to work with. And so we know in our role today uh, with our coaches and our, our student athletes that we have to we have to lead that way. Uh, and so all the things we've been through as coaches uh, in decision making, as you know, Trevor put it, you know, big decisions, right? In in that role, uh, in the pressure situations, but leading with consistency, uh, making good decisions, and typically doing the right thing. The mm -hmm. one thing that we've always, you know, taught all of our athletes, you know, character, integrity, uh, those things come in play as an athletic director. And sometimes, you know, we, we always lead with our heart, right? And sometimes that can get us in trouble yes. uh, because we do have big hearts. But at the end of the day, we're always going to do the right thing for our kids and our and our coaches and our community. I, says, I wanted to ask you about this because you took a, a little bit of a different route to, to where you were because you were, you were a school administrator, yes, sir. assistant principal at East Central, becoming the assistant athletic director. So you didn't really, and then, then getting the top spot. So you didn't go from coach to athletic director. Just the fact that you had that school administrative background, how do you think that's helped you as you as you uh, as you've gone into the athletic end of it? Well, that's definitely one thing that I am and grateful for and, and would never would never change if I had the opportunity to go back, uh, you know, is being able to be an assistant uh, assistant principal escape opened up my eyes because throughout my career, I was a, I was a PE teacher, right? Mm -hmm. a PE teacher and a coach. Uh, and so the curriculum and instruction side, the budget side was something I really didn't know much about. But uh, my principal, Mr. Toscano, and, and I had great help with the other assistant principals, but guided me and, you know, I was able to learn what the school building was all about in that side. So I think now as, a, as an athletic director, I understand what a master schedule, what it takes to build a master schedule. Uh, what it takes to be a great teacher. So I want our great our coaches to be great teachers before they're ever great coaches. Uh, and then what it takes to to work in that school building and to run that building, mm -hmm. the budget, the scheduling, uh, and everything that, that goes into that. So 
some coaches don't understand that part of it. Uh, if they've never, mm -hmm. I, and I, I didn't because I was in the gym. <clears throat> I lived in, you know, I, I worked in the gym all my life. Uh, and so that opportunity, um, I mean, I had no idea what that was, what I was getting into. And uh, having Mr. Toscano was an ex-coach. And so he was, he was really good at being able to uh, relate to me and he would turn everything into a sports analogy for me. Okay. Uh, even to the point when I was overlooking the English department, I'm like English department. Yeah. But he, he always found a way to turn that around for me and it's some, some type of sports analogy, but uh, being able to be an administrator was the, the best gift that anybody could have given me. It sounds like uh, just from what you told me, you've, you've received a lot of support within your athletic departments. But when you get outside your bubble there, and I think, Trevi, you really you told me a story about sometimes working with officials and just people that are not familiar with that. You're the athletic director. Right. Maybe they make an assumption that uh, they go to maybe a, a, a male, uh, yeah. <laughs> your male colleague. Or whatever. Right. Could you can you give me an example of just where you've. Where you've uh, where, where you've encountered that, where someone clearly did not realize that you were the athletic director, and even more so, they were surprised that you were the athletic director because you're a woman. I mean, is there? Yeah, well, actually, I just had uh, you know after our conversation, I had a, a situation happen like last week. Mm -hmm. um, but going back to my very first football game, um, I go in and to let the officials in the door, and I greet them and. Um, everything was fine and they come out and this official taps me on the shoulder and says, you're the athletic director. I said, yeah. And he says, turn around. And I turn around. He said, there's something on your back. And I said, what? And he said, it's a sticker. It says, kick me. <laughs> I was like, what? And he was like, yeah, good luck. And, uh, you know, I was polite and courteous and, um, made sure I got his name and scratched him. That he'd never come back again. Or <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> um, but um, I think just you know being able to run a show and in a historic place like Judson, yes. right? Yes. Um, there's a lot of it, it, you. T you talk about being a lot, having a lot of pressure as a coach working at Judson. I mean, as the athletic director, is even a lot more um, because the community just expects a product. Mm -hmm. to be good right and um and i think a lot of people um you know they have their doubts or they'll second guess decisions um so last week i had a very prominent um track coach um pull me aside and say why did you put those ugly lines on the on the football field because mm. we just lined our football field for right. the first time ever for soccer okay yes so he asked me why i put those ugly lines on there mm. And I said, well, we had a project where tech stock took away our grass field. He said, well, you should have just built another field. This is a football slash track coach in, in the community. Um, but it's that kind of just backward thinking that, that doesn't move the needle for us. Um, and if anyone knows that Judson's kind of been laying on the success of the 90s, mm -hmm. you know, we've actually gotten passed up. Mm -hmm. because of that kind of thinking so um take it with a grain of salt but you know still trying to be fair to everybody give the soccer kids a stadium experience the same as the football players right. have a stadium experience and move the needle with that kind <clears throat> of forward thinking can sometimes be tough you know because you are questioned and and you know why did you do that this is a football field and right. things like that but we have to do what's best for all kids. And it's sometimes it's not until you have a kid of your own that is mm -hmm. a soccer player, you're like, oh, okay, now I want the lines, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Exactly. Um, so um, just kind of those situations. But I would say for the most part, um, from the community, at least of, of Judson, I have their respect um, just because of what <clears throat> I think happened as a coach. Um, and I think that they all know that um, what I'm about, I'm about kids and and I want them to be successful at whatever grade they're playing. It's not just the high school kids. Well, then I wanted to ask you about when you interview at Harlandale ISD uh, for the position, you told me a story that um, you carried a sheet of paper with you to the, to, uh, to the interview. It had the names of women's athletic directors from the area. I wanted to ask you why, one, why, why did you have it with you? And why did you think it was important to have that with you as you were being interviewed for the position? I did have that in my portfolio. 
<clears throat> and I thought it was it was important for me to see that there are women in that position. I mean, this was a much bigger position than than I had ever expected, you know, mm -hmm. at the time that I would be applying for. And when it happened, I started doing my research and I saw, hey, there's, you know, eight other athletic directors or either assistant or, mm -hmm. you know, <clears throat> head athletic directors. And I can do like I, I've got this. But I wanted to also let the committee know that was doing the interview because I wasn't sure if they were aware, because mm -hmm. I know that if you're on a panel, you know, whoever was going to be on that panel, maybe they might be afraid to hire a woman. So I wanted them to know there are other women in this position and I can do this job. And um, the fact that you were able to return to the community that raised you and ascend to this position, um, what, is it, what does it mean to you that that's something that you've been able to do? You've kind of been able to make that full circle. Yeah, so I'm so grateful to be in this position. I mean, uh, it's home. It, it's literally home. And when we're at football games, volleyball games, basketball, it doesn't matter. Track meets. I see people that I went to school with. Mm -hmm. I see, you know, <clears throat> uh, ex-athletes. I see parents of ex-athletes. And so the community is so ingrained in, you know, in what we're doing for athletics that, you know, I want to make sure that that they they have a good experience. So for me to be in this position, um, you know, I know that I have to constantly be, you know, on top of things in the athletic world, I have to make sure that our coaches are okay, that our fields are good, mm -hmm. that our teams are properly equipped, and that the parents are happy because um, I'm part of that. And I that's how I see myself as part of them. And the, and the big the big thing with you, the probably the biggest, I don't know, maybe the biggest thing that you've, you've taken on is you did the uh, stadium renovation project at, yeah. uh, at Memorial Stadium. Uh, you know, you, I mean, I, I, when I started working here, I knew what the fields were like and the, and the facilities were like, but you've been able to upgrade, you, uh, the school district has been able to upgrade that considerably. Just knowing that you've been kind of a point person for that, what does it mean to you? Because just knowing how much you know it means to the community there. Um, <clears throat> definitely wasn't, you know, anything that I did by myself, yes. right? Our superintendent is a great supporter of athletics and he, he knows, he saw the needs that we have mm -hmm. and, uh, he wanted us to take that step forward. And so got out, we had to get out there. I think I told you for six weeks straight every week, I was <clears throat> at our six different schools mm -hmm. talking to the community and welcoming them to, you know, come to open meetings and be able to answer any questions that they might have. Because I knew it, that's, that's a scary thing for mm -hmm. people who don't understand what it means for your tax dollars or, you mm -hmm. know, if your taxes yes. are going to go up or yes. down or whatever. <clears throat> so, um, so I'm, Again, this was something that our kids needed. It was long overdue. I mean, we had puddles in our parking lots yes. and, you know, potholes and people spraining their ankles, literally, mm -hmm. you know, it, it really did happen that way. And so for us to be able to have a brand new parking lot right now mm -hmm. for our community to be able to be able to get off the car and, and enjoy their walk to the front door, that that's just a really good feeling, you know, not having to worry about is someone going to get hurt today. <laughs> so uh, yeah, yeah. So Trey, we kind of, we can't, you kind of blew through your coaching <clears throat> career, but you, you had a very successful run, obviously at Judson. I think you told me you were there eleven years, made the playoffs all eleven years, all eleven years, and then you made it to the state tournament five straight years, mm -hmm. winning it all in two thousand and nineteen, which is a rarity in San Antonio. <laughs> so, uh, given that, did you did you kind of think what was did you kind of this position and where you ended up, um, I, I think you were at a crossroads. I think you were considering an associate head job, uh, associate job over at North Texas. Right. We had kind of at a crossroads. Like, what, what do I do next? Was this kind of like the? Were you? Was this kind of the logical next step for you, or was it an option? How, how did you approach it when you kind of reached that point in your career? Definitely not the logical next step for me. Yeah, um, I've been doing basketball since I was three. Yeah, some former fashion. So um, even thinking about this felt like a bad breakup. Um, mm -hmm. And I was a little bit depressed at the beginning. I'm sure yeah. it's it's a transition. Um, but when I really thought about it, um, to be able to continue on the path of basketball, mm -hmm. who's been basketball has been so good to me, so many opportunities it's offered me. But to go to this other side and um, be able to be a mentor for other women who aspire to be in this position, because I've never had that. Mm -hmm. um, to be give coordinator coordinators a seat at the table, um, to give them opportunities um, for growth and success, and and ultimately be able to hire, um, because I think that yeah, a, a lot has changed through the years, and women are 
now breaking through athletic administration, but they're still not the boss. All right. And I think you'll see a lot of women who are assistant athletic <clears throat> directors, but not many of them have the head seat. Right. And um, so be able to give them an opportunity was and be a mentor to them and open doors for them uh, the way they have. Um, I thought that that was something special, you know, and and um, you want to you want to feel valued still in in the work that you do. Mm -hmm. And I thought that this was something that I couldn't pass up at the time. So each of you were raised in uh, on the south side, predominantly Latino communities, um, a lot of, um, you know, economically challenged communities. Uh, the fact that what does it mean to each of you that you've been able to rise to the positions in which you have and how important is it to, for people who know where you're from to see you in these positions? What, what, do, what do each of you think about that? Well, I know uh, for me, um, uh, I'm I'm proud to be a South Sider and 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 a Highland Al, and and I'm very proud to to talk about that at any point. But uh, you know, I was I was like two streets away from being an East Central Hornet. Um, mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, the, where the right. boundaries were. So, yeah. you know, I do consider uh, that I'm at East Central about as close as home as I can be, uh, and it's not any place that I, I want to leave. I, I plan on retiring there. Uh, so, but, you know, taking care of the kids of, of the South side and giving them the best that we can uh, means a lot to me, uh, knowing the community and the families, uh, and being, you, you can't go anywhere on the South side without knowing someone, mm -hmm. um, sometimes not even on the North side even, but, uh, and, uh, <clears throat> and for me, it's about watching these kids grow. Mm -hmm. And now I have. I have kids that I that have graduated. That I have their kids now that are coming through somewhere in our elementary system, and even kids that kids that I went to school with at, at Highlands that have come back that live in the East Central District now. So it's just it's a it's a big community within mm -hmm. that uh, borderline of East Central and in the Highlands area, and so it's just important that I'm able to give back because I I was there was a point in my young career of middle school that I could have. I had to make a choice. I could have continued down a path of, of having fun and, and, and getting in trouble. Mm -hmm. uh, and then my middle school coaches kicked me out of athletics and said, that here's your choices. Like you're either going to straighten up to stay in athletics or we're, you're going to remain off the team and continue to go have fun. Right. Right. And athletics was my, was my ticket. I knew that. Uh, and so, you know, if it wasn't for them and, you know, making me, giving me the opportunity for mm -hmm. me to make that choice, uh, I wouldn't be here today. So it's just for me, it's it's giving back uh, and making sure that I'm giving my kids and anybody that, around that opportunity and trying to help. I'm going to be honest. I didn't know that I was economically disadvantaged. Yeah. yeah. I didn't. Know. Yeah. Oh, you know? just 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 no. just, just Being, when you were growing up. Right. Yeah. Like we we were never given that. That was never instilled in us. Right. It, it was, we were never talked about at home like you don't have or you won't have or right. you can't have. Right. You know, we just. I thought everyone was just like me, you yes. know, and, and yes. we went to school and the traditions that we had at school, starting from elementary, I mean, you know, it was an Adams Papoose and a Harlandale Middle Brave and then a Harlandale <laughs> Indian. I mean, those were just things that were like, mm -hmm. you know, you work hard and my parents, my mom worked in the cafeteria in the this, in this Harlandale Independent School District. I didn't know that she was a blue collar worker or, you know, on the lower end of the income status or anything like that. Right. So um, what does that mean to me? I mean, I... Be and I, I appreciate that, that the teachers and the coaches that I had didn't ever let us know that that's what we were. We thought we were everyone else was just like us. And so that's what I want for our kids to understand that you are where you are, but it's what you make of yourself right in the future. And so I want to make sure that our coaches um, grow our kids too. you know, graduate our kids and help them move on to be bigger and successful than we are now. Yeah, I would say. um a little nugget before UIL had PAPFs mm -hmm. is that I actually grew up on the west side of San Antonio. I was supposed to go to Lanier High Lanier. School. Okay. And then this lady, uh, Tina Camacho, who I wanted to play <laughs> for, um, I had to, in order to go to Burbank um, and play basketball there, I had to take agriculture. So, uh, um, yeah, you know, we we established the UIL rules <laughs> ourselves there. <laughs> found a way. I found a way. Yeah, that's why but, she had the cows. Um, <laughs> but growing up, whether it's the, west side of san antonio or the south side of san antonio um 
you know, my dad always said, whatever you're looking for, you can find it at any school. You're looking for the bad crowd, the good crowd. Mm -hmm. You'll find it right. at any school. So, um, you know, I think that it was real important for me when I went back and I coached at Burbank for six years to be able to show those kids and that you can do it. You know, it doesn't matter where you go to school if you want it and you're determined and um, you can find a way to get it done. But even now, so JISD uh, is 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 so divided in economically, mm -hmm. you know, the haves and the have nots that um, it is inspirational, I think, to a lot of kids and a lot of young women to see not just myself, but all of us in these types of roles that um, whether it's, you know, the, the stereotypical barriers or um, per, you know, just the segregation that we may experience in our occupation, it doesn't matter. Um, if you have the will to do it, then you can do it. And that's the best part of it for me. Well, I think that'll do it. I appreciate you um, participating in this uh, discussion. I think it's important to have these types of discussions just, just to know um, uh, where you guys stand on things and, and, and just to further the, the narrative on this. And, and uh, hopefully we'll have some more women's athletic directors in yes. the future. So <laughs> thank you again. And uh, when this article comes out, we'll uh, link it. Um, in the description. So, well, David, thank, we thank can we can never thank you enough for what you yeah. do for for all of us. Well, I and, appreciate uh, that. And recognizing, you know, not just us here today, but uh, all the other women athletic directors and assistant athletic directors. But you take very good care of the South Side programs, yes. uh, as you do all the teams in San Antonio. But uh, I, you know, I I feel blessed whenever you're around the East Central area, and uh, you know, at least always texting and, and checking in. So. We appreciate it. I know that you've got a big job, but uh, you spread yourself thin and yes. make sure that you take care of uh, the whole city and surrounding well, areas. Well, I appreciate so we do, that. We do thank you for I'm all you do. I'm a very supportive boss, so yeah. um, okay. he's allowed me to do that. So thank you again. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.